Who else? All from UC, okay? Who are who are here the first time? Here the first time. Oh, from UC. Who else? Oh, were you all there last night? Oh, good to see you again. Good to see you again. Very good. Very good. Happy to see you. From? Tiffany. Zamboanga. Oh, from Zamboanga, brother. Amen. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. At least we understand we have some new ones in our midst. <clears throat> this topic was taken from uh, the message entitled Redeeming the Time. Uh, this is uh, one of the lessons we take up in the Middle Age training. So this is a portion of that. Uh, so for the Middle Age ones, if you want to hear the complete message, which will take about one and a half hour, you have to join Mid Middle Age training module one. Right? So for those who have been to MAT Module 1, this is a short review, and this is the capsul capsulized portion of it, which should cater to everybody. Amen. Redeeming the time. Can you really recover the time that is lost? Is that really possible? You know? If, if you would like to imagine time, you know, it's... I always use this illustration. It's like this. You have two ends. When you say time, there must be a definite start. There must be a definite finish. Right? Of which the two ends are eternity. Eternity in the past, eternity in the future, and this is a bridge of time. And if I open this uh, cap, time starts to flow. And one day, it will just run out. Can you imagine? All right. Let, 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 let use our imagination for a while. So if we want to understand time, more so how to redeem the time, we need to ask the author of time. Right? Amen. There are no researches on this because there were, there were nobody at that time. Okay. So we will ask the Bible. The Bible, what does it say about time? Because only the Bible can explain eternity. Okay, next. So in the beginning, that's how the Bible started. In the beginning, God. Nothing else, no one else. So when we talk about eternity in the past, there is only... There is only... So you open the Bible... You look at the first verse, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, first few words, in the beginning, God. No time, nothing else, except God. Okay? And, and this God, our God, is a living God. He has a purpose. For this matter, he started his creation. Next. He created the universe. <clears throat> awesome. Billions of galaxies, billions of stars. The statistician has been trying to estimate it up to now. It's still a mystery. Because we can only see a certain portion of the universe. So whatever number you see now, those are simple calculations of one sector of the universe. Because we don't have the capability to see the whole gamut of these galaxies. This is an example of one galaxy. Now the question is, why were these created? Because we're part of it, right? Why were these created? To understand that, we fast forward, look at the last book of the Bible, Revelations, and in chapter 4, verse 11, it says, can we read together? You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive the glory and the honor and the power. For you have created all things, and because of your will, they were and were created. Why were things exist? Why do things exist? And why do things keep on existing? Because God has a will. He has something in his heart. There is something that 
will give him satisfaction, something that will fulfill what is his heart desire. So he has a will. He has an intention. For that intention, he created the whole universe. Now that we have the Bible available, we can understand from the Word of God that he has a plan. His plan is to have a group of people who can receive his life, who will take him as, his, as their supply and enjoyment, and this will become his expression. This will become the expression of his glory. This will become the expression of his authority. What wow, a marvelous plan, right? During that time, there was no man yet. So there were early creations. We do not know what they are. Anyhow, it's a marvelous creation. This is an example of one galaxy. A galaxy can, can, compose, can be composed of millions of heavenly bodies. Stars, meteors, meteorites, uh, planets, all kinds of sorts. Uh, uh, cosmic dust, cosmic snow, all kinds of things. Okay? So, but there are millions and millions of galaxies. So you can imagine it's vast. Next. This one example. Let's say this is, let's say this is Milky Way galaxy. This is not. We don't have a clear, real picture of Milky Way galaxy. But this is something right across. So a galaxy looks like that. And I highlighted one small dot there. And that small dot there happened to be a planet called Earth. So vast a universe. And in this vast universe, there is one small dot called Milky Way galaxy. In that small galaxy, there's one star, and there are galaxies with many stars. Okay? We have only one star in this galaxy. The Milky Way has a heart, which is the sun. And it has planets around it and several other heavenly bodies. One of these small spots there is called the Earth. That's our place. That's where we live. Ah, at least we have a spot, a place there, right? <coughs> now, many times we think we are so important. We are so significant. We think we are so great. We think everything in this universe revolves around us. We think that we are the most important creature in the whole universe. Amen. Now, can you imagine where you are there? Or where am I there? Small spot. So insignificant. Oh, the pride of man. The first thing we need to understand tonight, give up your pride. <laughs> we are not so great. <laughs> we are too small, too insignificant. Anyway, let's focus on that small dot there. I've already highlighted that, but let's focus on it. Next. My, uh, my assistant is getting too engrossed, so. <laughs> he, for, he forget once in a while that we're doing this together. So, <clears throat> anyway, thank you, Brother Ron. This is the Earth, beautiful, really beautiful, and that's how it was created. You know, and it, when it was created, it's like a round blue circle. It's a circle, a blue circle, floating in space. Wow. It was not until about 200 years ago that uh, they discovered that the earth is round. Long before that, people thought that the earth is flat. By the time you reach the end, you fall, right? But <laughs> thousands of years before the telescope was even developed, the Bible already says it's round, it's a circle. And it says it's hanging in space. So there's no, there's no Hercules carrying the earth at the back, you know? <laughs> no, not Hercules. Atlas, right? You know, some, some people still, still believe when they were young that this is how it is, right? Because the books are written that way. The Bible says it's a circle hanging in space. It was created very beautiful. 
In fact, when the earth was, was created, the stars in heaven sang with joy and praises. What a beautiful creation. Why? Because God has something in his heart. Okay? Don't forget about that. Anyway, what happened to us long before our time, there was a great rebellion in the universe. One third of angels were driven out, thrown out of the heavens. And where, do they want, where did they go? They went to this beautiful planet to make this as their headquarters. There are probably creatures at the time, no man yet. And uh, what happened to the earth after that? Next, it became void, darkness. It became waste. That's the second verse of the book of Genesis chapter 1. So we're still on just two verses. And those are millions of years away. You can imagine, right? And so, God has to proceed with the next level of creation. He said, and the Spirit was brooding above the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light, right? And he separated the water from the land. And we separated the water from the land. When light is there, and secondary light came in, then life can come out. Where there is light, life will follow. So, now there are creatures on the sea, there are creatures in the air, there are creatures on the ground, because, because vegetation started again, you know, life started coming back, and that was the best time to create man. Okay? So, God restored practically the earth. So the beauty was there again. We don't know if it's exactly the same, same appearance, but we know this is already the next generation, the second generation of the earth. That's when we were created. And we were created particularly because of God's will. Amen. We are those creatures who can contain the life of God. Amen. Because we have three parts. In the outside, we have the body. Inside, we have our soul, mind, emotion, and will. And we have the spirit. So those who are in UC last night, remember the glass that was empty? Our spirit is like that. That's intended to be filled up with the life of God. Amen. When we can receive this life, we will be the vessels to contain the life of God, the supply of His grace, and the expression of His nature. Next. Huh? One day, this will all disappear. If you fast forward again, the book of Revelation, there will be a last rebellion. Okay, that will be several thousands of years. At the end of, of the Bible, we can see that there will be a great rebellion. And after the great rebellion, the old earth and the old heaven that you see now will all be destroyed by fire. Amen. That will be judged. Huh? Yes. So all your dreams that has to do with this earth, all your hopes that you're going to this heaven will be destroyed with fire. Wow. That our destiny? No, 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 no. God has a better plan. He's going to restore everything. He's going to restore everything. We don't know how it would look like. We only know one thing. That by that time, the great city of God, the mingling of God, with his people will come down out of the new heaven into the new earth. Amen. The new Jerusalem will be the expression of the oneness of God and man. Amen. We do not know how it looks like. So do not use your imagination. It's not a material city. It's a mystical, divine, city. So, our mind is not good enough to understand it. We only know one thing. Because of God's will, He created all things. And because of His will, all these things will come to pass. And at the end of it, only God's will will prevail. Okay? Let's continue. While we have this earth, we need to redeem the time. While we are in time, we're still in time, right? In the bridge of time, we need to redeem the time. Next. So how do we redeem the time? 
<coughs> no, no, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. It's just, just a... That's just an illustration. What do we need to do? Now look, look at this verse, next verse. Can we read this together? If you call as father the one who without respect of persons judges according to each one's work, pass the time of your sojourning in fear. You know, Peter is one of the disciples that the Lord Jesus really shepherded for three and a half years on earth. After the Lord passed away, he became the leading apostle at the early part of the apostolic ministry. He knows the Lord very well. He knows how to love the Lord. He knows how to deny the Lord. He knows how to be dealt with by the Lord. He knows how to be disciplined by the Lord. And this is his lesson that he wants to pass to us. He said, if you call us father, the one who without respect of person judges, in short, do you know that God is the ultimate judge? If you know that, pass the time of your sojourning in fear. What is sojourning? Sojourning is a travel. To go from this place to this place. Sojourning. It's a travel. So we are travelers in time. That's what he's saying. We are travelers in time and we should pass the time of our sojourning in fear. Fear. Why? Because Whatever it is, at a certain point in time, we will meet him who created us. And he is a judge with no favoritism. He has no favorite. He respects no person. He will judge us according to his purpose. If we only know that, you will realize that our life is like that person. In fact, in practical life, I remember already what what my auntie would always remind us. He said, be careful when you walk in your life because it takes only one mistake. And that can be the end of you. It takes only one mistake. Life is so fragile, like a glass. You may not intend it, one mistake, you can break it. He said, be careful in what you do. Uh, I remember that for many, many years. And even once in a while, when I'm driving too fast, that reminds me, oops, life is so fragile. Take care of it. Pass the time of your sojourning in fear. Now, redeeming the time means we're not the only one crossing this bridge of time. There are others. And we need to learn at least two important principles. One is spiritual sensitivity and then spiritual training. Why? Because the world will not teach us about these things. The world does not understand God's will. The world does not understand time. The world will just try to trap you inside this travail. So, to develop spiritual sensitivity, to develop spiritual training, we have to be open. We have to be open. With what? Okay. Let's understand, first of all, the principles of time. Next. Okay. In the Bible, there is such thing as the appointed time. The appointed time. In Genesis 18.14, it says, Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life. This is Jehovah speaking with Abraham. You know, Abraham has no child. And... God called him out to find the city that is not built by man's hand. And he believed. Well, at the start, hesitatingly, eventually, he followed God. But he has no child, so he said, but what, what do I do now? I don't even have a son. If I follow you, what happens next? And God promised him a son. And he waited for it for many years, for many years. But to assure him, during one of the visitations, God reminded him, is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return unto thee according to the time of life. So there's a, an appointed time 
Many times we cannot wait. Remind yourself, there is an appointed time. At the right time, when Abraham was 100 years old, too old to have a son, and his wife was 99 years old, too old to have a child, to have a baby, she bore a child, a son unto Abraham by the name of Isaac. At the appointed time, Impossible to man, possible with God at the appointed time. In Exodus 9.5, and the Lord appointed a set time, saying, tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing in the land. If you look at Exodus, this is a time when <clears throat> the people of God, Israel, was under the bondage in Egypt, under Pharaoh, <clears throat> and Moses was sent to take them out of Egypt to send them to the good land. But Pharaoh's heart was hardened. He would not let them go. So on the fifth plague, on the fifth plague, uh, that will be the death of all cattle that belongs to the Egyptians. Moses sent this message to Pharaoh. Now what what struck me when I was reading this is and the Lord appointed a set time. Okay, there is a set time. Okay? Saying, tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing in the land. What caught my eye is the word tomorrow. God wants to do something. He told Moses, Moses, you go there. You take Pharaoh. This is what's going to happen. It's going to happen tomorrow. You know? What I cannot imagine is probably, okay, Moses was here trying to tell Pharaoh the same thing. But Pharaoh, I was imagining, should have asked. Well, if God is going to do that, why not now? Why tomorrow? What do you think is the answer? At this appointed time. <laughs> Why tomorrow? Because God wants it tomorrow. <laughs> you want it now? Or next week? No, no. God wants it tomorrow. It's going to happen tomorrow. The following day, all Egyptian cattle dead. He wants it. It happens. He has an appointed time. Job 7.1, is there not an appointed time to man on earth? Do you understand what it means? There is an appointed time for all of us. We have a definite start on earth, each one of us. And we have a definite finish on earth. He appoints the time. It is not our choice. I almost forgot about this verse until, you know, last December while we were on a trip to visit the churches in Gulf Cooperation Council region. We were crossing from Dubai to Abu Dhabi at the time. And we stopped in a traffic light okay, to allow, those are big highways in the Middle East, big highways, and the cars are very fast. So we stopped at the corner. We were fellowshipping, and then we had heard a big screech. <coughs> Boom! We look up. The car is turned upside down. I almost catch it like a glimpse. There were, there were young men crossing the street on this side, and the car came from that side. Lost control, and in a split second, one man dead. The light turned on. We move on. But we had the shock of our lifetime. We said, did you see that? Did you see that? Shh. We were on the highway, so we cannot stop. There were a lot of people already. Okay. What's the point? It reminded me. Life is so fragile. It takes only... That young man, I can imagine, have no clue what happened. He was just there crossing the street. It was his right of way. A green light for him, there was a turn, all of a sudden, a car out of control, all of a sudden, everything black. That's life. That is life. That's the life of man. It's not a life, it's not the kind of life you can hang on and trust. You need to receive a life that does not pass away with that. You need the eternal life of God. And the only way to receive it 
is to receive the life-giving Spirit of God. Amen. You receive it when you call on the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Okay, let's proceed. A time for everything. Can we read it together? For everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. Next, I said in my heart, God will judge the righteous and the wicked. For there is time. Every <clears throat> there is time. There is, for everything there is a season. In Ecclesiastes was written by the wealthiest king. One economist estimated that even at the present time, if you would assess the property and the kingdom of King Solomon, he would still be the wealthiest person that walked on earth, not Bill Gates. No. He's wealthy, but uh, Solomon's wealth is an entire kingdom of gold and silver and precious materials. Anyway, that's not the point. After he lived his life to the fullest, this, his conclusion was, this life is vanity of vanities. Everything under the sun is vanities. You're chasing after the wind. You're chasing after a bubble. By the time you touch it, gone. Okay? So, he concluded also in 3.1, For everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. And there may seem to be a lot of injustices happening. That's why people question a lot, how can these things happen? But actually, in the end of it, there is again an ultimate judge who will balance everything. Next. Redeeming the time. Oh, it's in the Bible. Ephesians 5.16 says, Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Next. Walk in wisdom towards those who are without. Redeeming the time. Oh, there's such thing as redeeming the time in the Bible. Yes, there is. Now, let's understand what it says. Next. So, important words. Redeeming the time, the days are evil. Redeeming the time, the days are evil. There, there's, a, there's something that happened before we were all born. And that, that, is, that was man fell to sin. Our forefathers were born already in sin. And so are we. So we were born in sin. Since sin entered creation, the universe has been corrupted and the earthly system was established by the, by the confusing work of the enemy. And man also was corrupted. Since then, every day became an evil day. I'm not sure if that registered. Let me give an example. Okay? Uh, let's say you're a student. Okay? You wake up, prepare your breakfast, run to the school, sit down at the class. Okay? After the class, meet some friends, hi, hello, come back to, come back to your house in the evening, study, very good, yeah? Finally, you graduated. After you graduated, you decided, I have to get a job. And you find a job. After some years, you said, perhaps I'm ready to uh, settle down and set up my family. So you find a spouse. Happy, right? Happy, okay. And then, after having a spouse, okay, uh, children should come. So one, two, three, four. Four only, four only. That's already too many. Okay. After four, you said, okay, now I have to send them to school, one after the other. Okay. Finally, they're all grown up, and now they're becoming to graduate, and you say, okay, okay, very good. Now I have to secure their future. How do you secure their future? Maybe I should have some insurances. Okay, now you secure their future, and then uh, they will have, I would like to see my grandchildren. You encourage them to get married, they get married, and now you're very old, then you look back, is that life? That's what you call life? You walked on earth for that? And by the time you realize it, 
your days are really numbered. Until your days are numbered, you would not know that your days are passing away. Who has got the time? Have you got the time? No, you don't have it. By that time, yes, you have grandchildren. Your children are very well accomplished. You got big house. You got big savings. You're going to leave them what? M mammon? What are you going to leave them? Legacy? And after that legacy, who remembers you after your death? Maybe one generation, they will remember you. Another generation, three more generations, who cares about you? You're down there in the dust. That life? That's why you walk on earth and labored a lot? Is that life? Those are evil days. And I've given you the good example. Can you imagine if you're not as successful as this example? That's not life. If that is what life is all about, why do we make our life so difficult? The days are evil. What does it mean? He said, do, therefore do not be foolish. Understand what the will of the Lord is. That is the contrast. What it says is, unless you live this life according to the will and purpose of God, your days are already gone. What about tomorrow? It ha never happened. Has your tomorrow happened? You only have today. Yesterday is gone. Today is here. Tomorrow, nobody knows. And you're trying to live your life the way you want it. You're going to finish your time on earth without reaching your purpose. If you cannot accomplish God's will, whose will are you going to accomplish? Yours? And after all those days, just like the young man, didn't even know what happened to him, gone? That's life. That's not life. Vanity. So what is a life? Life is something that goes beyond eternity, that goes beyond time, and connects eternity to eternity. There is only one life, and that is the life of God. If we can connect to the life of God, whatever happens on earth, we are connected from eternity to eternity. So other than the life of God, there's no real life in this universe. Everything will pass away. Man will pass away. The trees will pass away. The mountains will pass away. The stars, the universe, they will pass away. The word of God will not pass away. Amen. The breath of God will not pass away. That's what we need. In short, every day that we do not receive this breath of God, every day that we forget about the life of God, that day is an evil day. Well, we have a lot of middle-aged saints here. You can ask your parents, you can ask the middle-aged middle, middle saints, what do they feel about themselves? They will tell you, we're okay, I'm fine. But during the private moment, he enters the washroom, wash his face in the morning, and look at the mirror. That me? That me? Where's the beauty that was there? Where's the glow? Where's the strength? It's dying every day. Who has got your time? If the Lord has not gotten your time, you have lost it. Let's move on. Oh, sorry. Can we, just come, can we can just come back to that? Okay. <clears throat> now, the time here, we need to understand, in Greek word, there are two references to time. One is chronos, and the other one is kairos. When you say chronos, it means 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 in the morning, 7 o'clock time, right? The time that we know. But another word for, uh, for time is kairos. Kairos can be also translated as chance or opportunity. Okay? Kairos, opportunity. Kronos, time. But in English, both of them are, are translated as time. In this verse, 
the time is not the time on your clock. The time refer referred to here is kairos, which means opportunity. So you can read it that redeeming the opportunity because the days are evil. In short, opportunities come away every now and then. In fact, daily, when we wake up, is a day of opportunity. And the question is, where or to who will you commit that day? To who will you commit that opportunity? Who gets that opportunity? If it is not for the Lord, you've lost it already. Next. So to redeem the time means to discover and seize every opportunity God has given us every day and be able to use it for his divine purpose. If we do not miss the opportunities, the Lord will make tremendous gains and his work will make immense progress. Let me repeat that line. If we do not miss the opportunities, the Lord will make tremendous gains and his work will make immense progress. You know what happened? I'll give you a better day. You wake up again in the morning. As usual, prepare your breakfast. But before you prepare your breakfast, you realize this day belongs to the Lord. Not to me. Okay. The Lord belongs to uh, the, This day belongs to the Lord. So what do you do? While you fix your coffee, oh, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm a vessel who can receive you and I can enjoy you. Oh, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, mm. thank you, Lord, I can drink you. Lord, today, today, gain me, Lord. Gain me. Increase yourself in my being. Strengthen my inner man. Supply me, Lord. Oops, I'm late. I need to rush to the school. I go to the school. Okay? <clears throat> and in the jeepney, oh, heavy traffic. <sighs> I'll be late. And the traffic was heavy. And quietly, you were there in the corner. Lord Jesus, Amen. I am late. <laughs> <laughs> but I still love you. Amen. So you come to school smiling. You are late. Okay, <laughs> you do. You sat down. And you're... Your teacher noticed you. You are late again. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, sorry. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I needed that. <laughs> okay, here's your assignment. You list it down. Okay. By the time you're there, noontime, you start praying, Lord, thank you. That was a tough morning, but you are my strength. You are my supply. You are still my joy. Amen. And the day goes on until the evening. And in the evening, before you go to bed, you are there speaking to the Lord. Lord, my day is not exactly victorious, but you are my victory. Amen. I enjoyed you today. Amen. Thank you so much. Please wake me up early tomorrow so I won't be late. <laughs> Lord Jesus, I love you. That day, you have gained the Lord. Amen. And that day was gained by the Lord. Amen. That is redeeming the time. Doable? Don't forget, your day belongs to Him. Amen. And then every opportunity that will come your way, you will discover that it is an opportunity for the Lord to work Himself into your being. What about the businessman? What about the housewives? You have your own portion. But whatever you're doing, whatever you're doing, set your mind, set your mind on the things which are above. Amen. Not on the things which are on the earth. Let's move on. According to Watchman Nee, opportunity is like a pebble thrown in the water that produces ripples. You know? Ripples, right? That circles... The circles keep expanding until the ripples touch the shore. So about 100 years ago, this young man met the Lord, I mean received the Lord, just like you young people. And at that time, he realized his life is for the Lord. And the Lord did use him as a vessel, a channel of great mercies to reveal 
up to now what we are enjoying to understand God's purpose, God's economy, and God's way of carrying out His economy. Uh, watch money at that time, you know, is like a pebble himself. Probably he didn't realize it. He said it, he didn't realize it, that he was also like a pebble. Oop, thrown in the pond. He died in a prison camp of uh, the communists under persecution for his faith. Almost, almost forgotten, except by the people who have read his writing, heard him speak, and understood and received the Lord and became testimonies of the church. And this faith spread out. This faith spread out. He has received it. He has passed it on and on and on. And it crossed the ocean. We have received the same gospel. We have received the same faith. It has spread across the earth. Next. He said, today the problem is not that the Lord does not give us opportunities. Don't think you don't have opportunities. We have a lot. But that we miss the opportunities that he gives us. Time is constant, but opportunities are not. Time is continuous, but opportunities come and go. Opportunities do not wait for us. Once time moves on, opportunity is gone. So time passes by. You cannot stop it. By the minute, by the seconds. But opportunity may come and go. So it matters that you are prepared. You are ready. You are ready to grab it when it happens. Next. Seize every opportunity. Uh, some examples. You know, 2,000 years ago, there was this wise men. They were studying the signs, the heavens, the stars, and... They knew at a certain point in time, a certain star will appear during their lifetime. And it did appear. They saw it. So these men from the east crossed the desert, crossed many places, perhaps many weeks, perhaps many months, because they were following that star. They said, we need to reach the point of that star, because according to the prophecies, a king shall be born in Israel, and they'd like to see the baby. And they were there. They were faithful enough. They followed the star. But they have the religious background. They ended up in Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, they asked the people. The people said, no, it will not be here. It will be in Bethlehem. Okay? They pointed them to Bethlehem. So they followed the leading, and the star appeared again. And they found the baby Jesus. They were among the first to see the king of Israel, God who became man. But in Jerusalem, there were people. They know, but they were not watching for the opportunity. They just know, oh, he's going to be born in Bethlehem. They know, but they did not go to Bethlehem. So if you want, if you want to be able to grab the opportunity, you must be watchful. To know is not enough. You need to seek after it. Last kiss. Okay? Here's a husband. Here's a husband. That morning, he has to fix his own coffee. The wife doesn't want to fix his coffee that morning. She feels very bad. Because last night, they had some unpleasant talk. And the husband, uh, fixing some coffee, after that, kiss his wife. Uh, bye, honey. One more. So he left, few minutes, 20, 25 minutes, the phone rang, uh, this is uh, Mrs. Smith, can you uh, drop by, um, something happened to your husband, uh, we're in this hospital, blah, 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 so he proceeded to the hospital, she, she proceeded to the hospital, husband is dead, met a car accident, the husband is dead, <coughs> and she was crying. Oh, if I only knew, you know, that that was the last kiss. <laughs> too late, too late, too late for the husband to know that he has been forgiven. 
They had a quarrel the night before. But you know, women cannot overcome their emotions, so they, they still struggle. But what she's saying is, I have forgiven my husband, but I did not even have a chance to tell him. I didn't even have a chance to tell him I love him. I didn't have a chance to tell him I really care. And I understand our misunderstanding last night. But I have forgiven you. Opportunities. If there's a person you have not forgiven yet, better forgive. <laughs> you do not hold your time, and you do not know the person's time. Settle while you can settle. Okay? If you have not said, I love you to your parents, not to your boyfriend, forget about that. <laughs> to your parents, do that. They are short of time. Much shorter than what you can imagine. Bachoy, I'll jump some examples, right? Bachoy, we have a sister. We have a sister <coughs> uh, who serves in our locality. After the first module of middle age training, a lot of saints pick up the burden to revive the home meetings. So we were having a home meeting in one of the contacts, and she would always pass by the gate of that village. And in the gate of that village, she noticed a small cafeteria, a carinderia, uh, and they sell bachoy. She is an ilonga, you know bachoy, right? Soup, ilonga soup. So she said, I haven't tasted it for a long time. I'd like to try it. So one afternoon, she dropped by after home meeting. And then she sat down and prayed. Okay? By the time she looked up to eat her bachoy, a voice from the back asked her, uh, excuse me, ma'am, are you a Christian? She said, uh, yes. She said, oh. And uh, the lady behind her, who owns that small shop, said, you know, uh, where do you meet? I have been praying for the last two months. We don't have a meeting. We got stumbled in the group where we came from, and all the family stopped. Can, can I join you? I've been praying for this. Okay. <coughs> and then she said, okay, by all means. So the following Lord's Day, we fetch them, whole family. Wife, husband, one young son, young daughter, and three little kids. Two more sons and one. So in short, we have seven people, one pickup. And then they started testifying. She said, you know, I, I've been praying for the last two months. Lord, where do you lead us now? We got stumbled in the denomination, and, uh, and we, cannot, we cannot live a life without a meeting. Please show us. Show us the way. And she was practically meet, praying in that afternoon when she saw this sister praying before the meal. Now, this family is still with us. And for the kids, that we just realized maybe we should start a children's meeting. Now we have 17 in that house. They invited their friends. We have a small meeting there for the children. And every Friday evening, we have a home meeting for the family. Everyone sits in the meeting. Enjoy the Lord. Less than a minute opportunity. What if this sister did not pray and she just gobbled her bachoy? That could have been a lost opportunity. She did not allow her opportunity to pass by. She prayed, even if she's very excited to eat this bacho. That caused the salvation of a household. Grab the opportunity. Know it when it's there. Okay, we move on. We move on. More stories, but we move on. Next. Ah, here's the question. As sojourners on this earth, how can we seize the opportunities and redeem the time? You cannot be a backpacker without a backpack. You know what it means? You cannot go on a journey with nothing behind you. The moment you run out of water, the moment you run out of food, you want to go home. There goes your journey. Okay? <laughs> a backpacker knows the bag can sustain him for as long as he wants to travel. What do, we know, what do we need to put in our backpack? Next. First, repent. Can we read this together now? Repent and confess. 
for having me so much opportunities. How old are you now? How much opportunities have you wasted? Have you missed? The older you are, the more opportunities you have missed. The first thing to do, just tell the Lord, be honest, be honest with the Lord, and just say, tell him, Lord, um, Lord, forgive me. When I was a student, I was always late. Now I'm old, I'm still late. <laughs> I miss so much opportunities, Lord. By the time I notice it, it's already gone. Lord, help me, forgive me. Really confess, really confess. Lord, I'm really sorry. I miss so much opportunities. I almost cannot understand what I did with my life. Lord, give me another chance. Next. Psalms 20, 90, 12 says, Teach us then to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Amen. Without numbering our days, again, I tell you, you thought you have eternity before you. Well, your heart is seeking for opportunity. But that opportunity, seeking for eternity. But that eternity is not something outward. It's not about your tomorrow. It's about your today. Your today needs to be connected to this opportunity, to this eternity. And this eternity is in Christ. So, if you want to receive this eternity, simply ask the Lord, 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 I need you. Lord, I've lost so much opportunity. I want to recover my time. Lord, I give myself to you. Lord Jesus, I receive you. Lord Jesus. You do not know how many days you, do, you still have on earth. You only know one thing. That wherever is there has to belong to the Lord. Next. So second, together. Give yourself to love the Lord. That he might train your spiritual senses. Next. What does it mean? 1 Corinthians 9, 2, 9 to 10 says, But as it is written, things which eye has not seen, and ear has not heard, and which have not come up in man's heart, things which God has prepared for those who love him. But to us, God has revealed them through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. In short, what is he saying? This is saying, God has something in store for you. He wants to tell it to you. He wants to show it to you. He wants to reveal this to you. The problem is, until you love him, you will not understand it. This is reserved for those who love him. That's why we tell him every time, Lord Jesus, I love you. Even if you say, Lord, I'm not sure if I really love you. Maybe I love you so little. It's still enough reason to tell the Lord, Lord, so little, but I love you. I will tell you, the more you are honest between him and yourself, that love of God will grow in you. Amen. Why? Because that love did not come from you. Amen. It came from him. Amen. He just gave it to you. Amen. And the more you know him, the more you love him. Amen. The more you look up him, the more you behold him, the more you love him. Amen. The more you run after him, the more lovely he becomes. Amen. He is the loveliest person in the whole universe. You're not looking for anyone else. Fairest of 10,000. You're not looking for anybody else. You're looking for the Lord Jesus. Never mind the Valentine's Day. <laughs> Brothers, leave that to the world. Amen. We have only one love. Amen. Our love is the Lord Jesus. Amen. Eh? And to those who love him, he arranges all things. So that he can reveal himself to you. You say, Lord Jesus, I love you. Oh, I'd like you to know that I'm the daily grace that you enjoy. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you. You're my daily grace. Praise the Lord. I love you, Lord. Oh, you love me? Now, I'm, let me reveal to you. Come to my word. Is it shining? Can you see the light? Yes, it's not just black and white. I'm enjoying it. Oh, okay. Lord Jesus, I love you. I'm enjoying your word. Okay, come, come, come. See your friends? See? Oh, they're so dark. Yes. Can you speak 
about me to your friends? Oh, yeah. When you speak the Lord to your friends, you can see them turn from darkness to light. They don't understand. You don't understand. You say, Lord, thank you. You saved my friends. So he reveals to you. He reveals himself to you stage by stage by stage. The more you tell him you love him, the more he, has, he gives you the opportunity to reveal himself. Marvelous. Okay, next. Together. But how do we get God's wisdom? Next. Proverbs 2.6 For Jehovah gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. The fear of Jehovah is the instruction of wisdom. And humility goes before honor. In short, Wisdom comes from the mouth of Jehovah. What comes out of the mouth of Jehovah? His words. Wisdom comes from the word of God. And the more you know the word of God, the more you will know him. And the more you will know him, the more you will love him. The more you love him, the more you will discover, oh, he's a jealous God. He loves you at all extent. And he wants you to love him with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. He wants you to be a sincere partner to him. Oh, then you start feeling a divine fear. Not because you're scared, but because you want to keep this relationship. It's so delicate. It's so sweet. So, you start having a divine fear. Not for anything else, but out of deep understanding of who God is. Amen. Next. Together now, take the commission, speak the gospel. Okay, next. John 15, 16 says, You did not choose me. I chose you. And I said to you that you should go forth and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain. Oh, in our school, it's very difficult to speak the gospel. Really? Yeah, my classmates doesn't want to listen. Really? Oh, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm a teacher. My students, no, I cannot do that. I won't do that. Very difficult. They don't listen to me. Oh, my neighbors, oh, they all close the door. Oh, my friends, I invited them, they laugh at me. Oh, they, they don't like to hear the gospel. Okay. Read the verse again. You did not choose me, but I chose you. Chose you. Chose you. He chose you. You did not choose him. He chose you. And then what did he do? He set you. Okay, now, now that I chose you, I put you into that school. And that will be your classmates, right? Now, you bear fruit. And you keep on complaining. I cannot do that. That's the place for you. What about my friends? That's why I put you, I put them around you. So that you can testify for me. Every place is difficult as long as you don't like it. Every person is closed as long as you don't try. But you know why you have this kind of people around you? You're in exactly the same space, the same place, the right place, the right time, the right people around you. Because he has set you. You are there exactly because you are supposed to be there. They are your friends because they are supposed to be your friends. You know why? Because in that kind of environment, you have to bear much fruit. And that fruit should remain. What about my neighbors? Can you... Pluck out your house? That's your house. And they're your neighbors. Learn how to deal with them. Gain their heart. They're difficult. That's why I put you there. You're the right person. You're at the right time. They're waiting for your gospel. And I cannot do that. Now this is what the Lord said. Next. I cannot do that. I don't know how to speak the gospel. You said to this man. This one, this one was possessed by devil and he drove the demons away. And this happened in Gerasenes region. 
And Jesus said to him, so when he met him again, Go to your house, to your own people, and report to them what great things the Lord has done for you, and how he has had mercy on you. Testify. Testify. Don't try to convince them. You will not. You cannot convince people. Don't think you can convince people. You may have a lot of words. You may have no words. That doesn't matter. What matters is, what have you experienced? How did you enjoy the Lord? Just be honest. Just be sincere. Testify. Tell them what happened to you. This man was healed, so he testified. In fact, he testified in Decapolis. Decapolis means a region of ten cities. Wherever you go, that's where he testified. You know, I was demon-possessed. The Lord healed me. You need to meet this Jesus. Ten cities listening to one man. That's a testimony. What did he say? He didn't say, you know, he was born here and he educated that way. He did not convince them. He just told them, this was me and now this is what I am. Because of this man, Jesus. Next. Ah. One day, Matthew 21, the Lord Jesus was walking and he went to a fig tree. You know, there are thousands of varieties of fig tree. But fig tree, fig tree characteristic, and it's common there in Israel, is the, it's supposed to be a flower or a fruit flower. It grows on every place, on the trunk, on the branches, and all year round there's supposed to be fig fruit. There's a season when there will be plenty, but supposedly all year round it just grows here and there. Ko alam niyo yung kamyas, parang kamyas. Yeah? It grows in the body. So you just pluck it and eat it. But when the Lord Jesus come, came to the fig tree, there were no fruits. No fruits. So, he cast it out. He cursed the tree. By the afternoon, when the disciples came back, the tree is already dried up. John 15. There were two cuttings. There are two cuttings. One, when the branch does not bear fruit, he cuts it down. Number two, when it bears fruit, he prunes it so that it will bear more fruit. How was your fruit, brothers and sisters? When was the last time you bear fruit? And every tree that does not bear fruit, cast down. No more tree. <laughs> no, the tree is still there. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Tree is still there. Tree is still there. Don't, don't lose your hope. As long as the roots of the trees are still on the ground, the earth is still the riches of Christ. Okay? The, Christ is the good land. You want to remain in the good land? You have to remain in the church life. This is where we draw out all the riches of Christ. Stay with the brothers and sisters. They will supply you. Don't worry. In due time, the branches will be soft and tender again, ready to bear fruit. But of course, you have to tell the Lord, I'm sorry. I didn't realize it has been many years. I've lost so many years not bearing fruit. Lord, I want to bear fruit. Make me fresh and tender. I come to you. Make me a fruitful branch. Next. Okay, just a couple of pages now. Next. God's will is mostly in the opportunities He has given us. The more we know God's will, the more we will seize the opportunities. What is God's will? He wants man to contain Him. He wants us to receive Him. He wants Himself to dwell in us. That is His will. Open to Him. Allow Him. Give Him the preeminence. Next. Once God moves, we should move. Rise up and seize the opportunity. Next. Let's summarize now. To seize every opportunity, number one, we need to we need spiritual training. Number two, 
We need to have prayerful life. Three, we need to seek for light in God's word. Four, we need to be built up with other saints. Five, we need to give ourselves to love the Lord. Six, we need to become heralds of the gospel. We should ask God to preserve each and every opportunity that he gives us. Next. Well, we may think that time is endless like this ocean. Yeah? It's like endless. But actually, that is not our time. Our time is like this. <laughs> so small. Okay. It's flowing, full of life, full of energy. But you know, one day, it will dry up. While you have the time, watch therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord comes. Next, redeem the time. Why don't we have a short prayer about it? We give ourselves before the Lord. Okay. Lord Jesus, Amen. time is not in our hands. Lord, it is yours. Amen. Lord, we live on borrowed time. Amen. Lord, give us the wisdom. Amen. How to make this time useful before you. Amen. Forgive us for wasting so much time. Amen. So much opportunities in our lives. Amen. To gain you, to acquire you. Amen. That you can be increased in us. Amen. Lord, we receive you. Amen. You are the life-giving spirit. You did not only die for us. Amen. You resurrected for us. Amen. You are the life-giving spirit. Amen. Bring us the eternal life. Amen. So we can overcome the evil days. Amen. Lord, preserve us. Amen. Preserve us under your care. Amen. Preserve us under the care of the brothers and sisters. Amen. We want to remain in your house. Amen. We want to remain under your supply. Amen. Preserve us under your grace. Amen. We love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Okay. That's our last page. Thank you. You want to sing again the chorus at least before we end? Okay. You still remember the chorus, right? Be in time. Oh, we have a new pianist. Sister is there. That's him. What him? What's that? Okay, let's all stand up. Sing the chorus. Be in time.